Alright, I don't know what's going on with my mic, so this is my fourth attempt trying to do the fucking intro, so let's just get on with it and hopefully it works out this time. Following on from the 2019 release of Siege, Hasbro continued the War for Cybertron trilogy with Earthrise, making its release in 2020. As such, the focus of this video will be looking back on Earthrise, seeing what worked, what did it, much in the same way as before. One thing I realised was, during the making of this video, was that a lot of the good points and the bad points in Earthrise are essentially just amplified from Siege, so keep that in mind as we go forward. I am going to try and come at it from a slightly different angle, just so I'm not repeating myself, but I just wanted you guys to have that in mind. With all that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Okay, before we go any further, let's just get this first point straight out of the way. As I said, Earthrise was released in 2020. Now, I'm not going to hang about on what happened in 2020. I think everyone was there for it. But that year did have an impact on the release and distribution of this line, as well as some of the other elements. I'm going to go into that as we go on, but this isn't just going to be a rant about what we received from this line in that year. This is more just going to be acknowledging what happened, the effect it had, but it's, it's not just going to devolve into me shouting and screaming about it. That's reductive at this point. It's been and gone nearly 18 months by this point, so I feel it'd be more beneficial just to actually look back at the impact and see what happened. So with that point out of the way, let's get to what changed. So a lot of what was introduced with Siege stayed with Earthrise, so I'm not going to go over everything because that, that would just be wasting time at this point. Instead, I'm going to go over the differences between Siege and Earthrise. First of the changes to this line were the Battlemasters. So previously the Battlemasters all formed handheld weapons of varying degrees, so guns to melee weapons. Whereas the Battlemasters in this particular line were now defensive tools, I guess you'd say. I don't know, they weren't weapons any longer, they were now shields. And granted, this was part of the new gimmick introduced with this line. No longer were we getting traditional Target Master style Battlemasters, we were now getting defensive Battlemasters which formed shields slash ramps. Without getting into too much of personal opinion, I don't really have much affinity towards these. I own them just because they were a release and I wanted to support this particular size class because I've got a lot of love for legend scale stuff. But ultimately, from the offerings of Micromasters, Battlemasters, I do feel the Earthrise Battlemasters were the weakest of what I had to be offered throughout the trilogy. As I said, the Battlemasters are now shields slash ramps. The second half of that identifier is to do with the brand new air system, which I've put the acronym up on screen, which was essentially a series of tabs which all connected various panels together. Many of the figures all came with these tabs. The idea behind it was you would use it to connect all these characters together to form sprawling cityscapes for the Micromasters to play in. It didn't replace combat. It was added and ran alongside combat. And it ties in very well with this next point, which is the weaponizers. Weaponizers have now changed from weaponizers to modulators. So we've now gone from characters who split apart to form weaponry and armor to now characters who split apart and form city pieces, ramps. It's, it's hard to particularly define it as anything more than just building blocks. Legs now break apart and form ramps, they form runways, you know, you've got the center body forms a building. You've got a lot of moving parts going on with this. It's a lot more free than the weapon system, but at the same time it isn't because what else can you really do with a lot of these pieces? It's not a change I hated, I feel like the modulators have got a weird charm to them and whereas the weaponizers were adaptations of the Titan companion bots, one of whom makes an appearance in this line. The modulators are based off the old MicroMaster facilities. So Ironworks was based off the old Ironworks and Airwave was based on the old Overair, I believe, Overair facility. It's a more interesting way of introducing these characters to the main line and being able to have the freedom to do something different with them compared to before. The only other major change from Siege to Earthrise was now the aesthetic has gone from partially Cybertronian to primarily Earth-based. So there's no longer Sideswipes a Cybertronian vehicle, but he looks a lot like a Lamborghini on Earth. Now it's here's Sunstreaker, he's a Lamborghini. 
or an approximation thereof. Very few of the characters are still sporting Cybertronian alt modes. So whatever you stand on that, that's where we're at now. We've gone from partially Cybertronian to fully Earth committed outside of one or two characters and that's where we'll be at moving forward. So same as last time, we're just going to do a quick wave breakdown just so we can go over what was released in the main line. Of note, this line only had three waves, obviously because of other issues going on in the world at the time. They didn't have the ability to do the normal five to six wave run, so instead we've got three waves. So wave one contained the Battle Masters, Sound Barrier and Smashdown. The Micro Masters, Trip Up and Daddio, Bomb Shock and Growl. For Deluxe Class you had Hoist, Wheeljack, Cliff Jumper and Ironworks. In Voyager Class you had Starscream and Grapple, and in Leader Class you had Optimus Prime and Astro Train. In Wave 2, you had Slitherfang and Rung. For Micromasters, you had Roller Force and Groundhog, and Fuser and Blastmaster. For Deluxe Class, you had RC, Airwave, the Alicon, and Smokescreen. In Voyager Class, you had Snapdragon, and for the last of the Leader Class, you had Double Dealer. So Wave 3, as I said, was the final wave. So you had for the Battlemasters, Double Crosser. For the Micromasters, you had Direct Hit and Power Punch. Deluxe Class featured Trailbreaker, Fast Track, Sunstreaker, and Runamuck. Your Wave 3 Voyager Class was the Quintesson Judge and Megatron. Commander Class returned this year with Skylinks, and in Titan Class, we had the modern debut of Scorponok. Alright, so contrary to popular belief, Earthrise isn't all bad. It has its good points as its bad points, as every line does. I think people just tend to pick on Earthrise a lot more just because of the external factors that surrounded it, so it makes it a bit of an easier target with its shortcomings. The first one being continuing to recognize obscure characters, so where Siege would take one or two characters that hadn't been seen in a long time, or one or two characters even from other lines, and bring them into the modern line, it decided to tap into the 80s and 90s history of the franchise. So through this line, we got Snapdragon to accompany Ape Face, we got Double Dealer, who received his first new toy for the first time since Generation 1, I think. I know he had a repaint of the Thrilling 30 Blitzwing mold, but that didn't quite do the job as well as what this one does. We got the Battle Chargers making their return to Mainline for the first time in however many years since the last exclusive appearance at a convention somewhere. Dominating the higher classes, we have Skylinks and Scorponok, both receiving major toy releases for the first time in a long time, to the best of my knowledge. I know Scorponok's had redecos in the past of like the Underdrawn mold and all that, but to have one in this size with this sort of detail is just fantastic. Skylinks, I genuinely think Skylinks is the best commander class release. Granted, I could be biased at the minute as I just got Motormaster from Legacy, so I'm gonna have to sit and think on that one. But before I got my hands on him, I would genuinely say Skylinks was the best release for the commander class, and it's nice to see Skylinks make such a strong return with such a strong figure. We also have them continuing the trend of mini masterpiece. In this line, it, the examples became a lot stronger, primarily because of the existence of leader class Optimus Prime. I see people say that he's overrated quite a lot, but to be honest, I think he's the best Generations Prime we've ever gotten. He does everything, he has everything, he just, he looks the part, he feels the part. I think he's an Optimus figure without rival, like I've got as many separate repaints of him as I can get. I'm hoping and praying every day that we get different ones, just because I love this mold so much. I love adding to the lineup anything with him on it, like, like granted I don't have any of the same character recolors like the Netflix release, but the Ultimate Universe Prime as well as the Generation Select Shattered Glass Prime with this absolutely beautiful mold that is without comparison like the Megatrons that they make for this trilogy just do not compare but outside of that like I say Skylinks is just phenomenal Scorponok I'm probably biased he's my favorite Titan class I've owned all of them bar Fortress Maximus and I genuinely think the Scorponok mold is the best one he's the only Titan I've bought the same twice outside of him I'd argue yeah quality control issues aside we got very very good very definitive cast of 1984 1985 so sunstreaker does the job grapple is amazing the hoist trailbreaker mold is very nice to have on the shelf but yeah like i say just this running theme of mini masterpiece like 
I'm going to defend Cliff Jumper here now. The parts warming doesn't bother me. I think for what he is, he's the best rendition of Cliff Jumper you can get. I prefer to think of him as a generation scale masterpiece as opposed to an undersized deluxe because, yeah, he's small. I think he's very good at what they want Cliff Jumper to do. This one could be debated upon. But I feel this is a strength from me because this is our first line, I believe. I know Cyberverse did it, but I don't know if they did it before or after at the same time. But this is the first line outside of one figure in Energon to finally give us a toy of the Quintesson. We finally got Quintessons for the first time on what was nearly the 35th anniversary of the first appearance. Now, I can see the logical flaws with this toy. It's not very engaging, it's not very interesting, it's not that great in the grand scheme of things. Like if you ask me where would I put it in a ranking scale with the other moulds, it would probably be near the bottom, but I just can't get over the fact we finally got a Quintus on. It's nice to have something that isn't Cybertronian or human. You know, we finally got that third element, which is outer space, which is extraterrestrial. And I'd say they just wonderfully match the original Generation 1 appearance. Same as before, there are certain points in this good and bad which don't really quite fit into either, at least in my opinion. So, first of these is the change in aesthetic. So as I said, we've gone from partial Cybertronian to fully Earth committed. Now on the one hand, I enjoy this because it gives us very model accurate figures that are just, they look like they've stepped right off the screen. I love seeing the comparison images to the old character models versus the new toys. But at the same time, it feels a shame just purely because we sort of began on this trajectory of we're not going to Earth, we're going spaceward, we're going to do something different, we're going to have other designs. Whereas now it's, no, we've gone to Earth, We've all got Earth-based vehicle modes. Yeah, like I said, one or two don't, but for the most part, they all do. And to me, it just felt like a missed opportunity. I don't hate this. I don't love it. I enjoy it for what it is. This one is neither a strong nor a negative for me. With this line began the trend of repackaging previous line releases. As I mentioned before, you had Rung, you had Direct Hit and Power Punch, Smash Down, and you had Astro Train. Yeah, that's right. They released Astro Train twice and I still didn't buy them. I don't really take issue with the implementation of it in Earthrise, but I take greater issue for what it would go on to become. This was something that wasn't a problem here, but would later go on to become a problem as we progressed into the next phase of this trilogy. So I just wanted to get it out here now and just mention that before we progressed. So as I said, taking the good with the bad. Similarly to the good, the bad was very much a reflection of what came before it. So the first point I want to mention is quality control. I understand that it was difficult to get to places and actually like do the job at hand, but I think it's worth just going over that a lot of the quality control in this line just seemed to take a nosedive. I've seen multiple threads online about limbs being in the wrong place, i.e. two left legs. I've seen posts about paint missing. I've seen posts about figures falling to pieces, loose joints, stress marks. I want to say yellowing, but I don't think the yellowing technically began with this. The most prominent quality control issue that I can remember was Grapple's pegs on his headpiece. Whenever you transformed him, the pegs would be inserted into the bottom of the foot and that would hold the crane mode together. But for some reason, the pegs were too big. So when you'd be inserting the pegs into the foot and then try to transform them back, they'd snap off. Personally, I'd seen that many people reporting on this before I ever got my hands on them that when I did get my hands on them, the first thing I did was steal my wife's nail file and file down those pegs. So I didn't have to worry about it and it's never caused me a problem since. Similarly, clear plastic became a bigger problem in this. There was more pieces made of clear plastic. For some reason, it was such an integral part of the design. I'd seen more threads online regarding the shins of the Datsun mold snapping with this than I ever did with Siege. I've not encountered too much of it myself, but I have got various figures with stress marks in various places. I have got some figures with looser joints than what they should have. Whilst I've been lucky enough to avoid a lot of the problems that I've seen reported. I've seen more issues reported with Earthrise releases than I have Siege releases. And it's just interesting to see the devolution, if you would, 
in terms of quality control like i said i get it there there's a reason for it it's not just they suddenly got lazy but i just felt it was worth putting out there anyway it's something everyone knows about carrying on from siege as well we have exclusives now i mentioned that it was a bit of a problem there so i'm going to do a quick before and after so here's all of my arthritis collection and here's my arthritis collection without the exclusives yeah, you can see the, the stark difference there, just how many disappear. I don't know if I'm going to devote as much time to, you know, sort of recap and a micro review and all the exclusives, but I am just going to go through everything that was released. So for Amazon, you have the Ultimate Universe Optimus Prime, the Seeker Elite, which is Ramjet and Dirge, and the Autobot Alliance, which is Ironhide and Prowl. Blue Street makes his return to exclusivity this time with Walgreens. He's the only Walgreens exclusive, but he's an exclusive again. Hasbro Pulse made the debut this year, releasing the Deluxe Centurion drone, who was the weaponizer repaint of Brunt. Those came with a weapon pack containing various character accessories, which were all based on the original G1 cartoon. Target took on one individual exclusive release along with the Cybertronian villain subline. So the individual release was Runabout, yeah, one half of the Battle Chargers, as well as the Cybertronian villains subline. So you've got Thrust, Skywarp, Thundercracker, and the Decepticon clones, Pounce and Wingspan. I've got to mention as well, Amazon also took on the Galactic Odyssey collection, which was a series of five packs. Basically, this is the precursor to the Wrecker subline or Speedia 500, Velocitron or the Golden Disc Collection. This was a sort of first whack at doing that sort of thing. Pack 1, Paradrome Medics, Ratchet and Lifeline. Yep, Ratchet is again exclusive, like Skywarp, I've got to mention. So that's two years in a row these guys have been all exclusive. Pack 2, Micron Micromasters containing Fireguard, Roadburner, Runner, Motorhead, Sting Racer and Windstorm. Pack 3, the Biosphera Autobot Cloud, Fast Lane and Cloud Wrecker. Pack 4, Barricade and Punch Counter Punch in the Dominus Criminal Pursuit. And the fifth pack, the Botropolis Rescue Mission, which contained Over Air, Ironworks, Fuser, Blastmaster, Missile Master, and Moonrock. Try saying that five times. As well as this going on, you also had a healthy offering from the Netflix subline carrying on from Siege, as well as Generation Selects giving it its strongest outpour with a total of 15 releases over the course of 2020 and into 2021. So my biggest problem with the exclusives is it ties back in with the bigger problem. I feel I've not found anything to confirm this. I've seen it posted in a few places, but I've never seen anything to officially say this. I think what happened was a lot of these were intended for a mainline release. The world stopped. So they were unable to continue doing all these waves. So instead what happened was all these retailers stepped in and said, we'll buy that exclusively, we'll buy that exclusively. And in the end, they bought all these characters, all these figures up, released them as sets, because I just can't figure out how you can have all these, like certain characters be exclusive two years in a row. We get all six Seekers in this line alone, yet only Starscream is available at general retail. And then when they re-release the mold as part of Studio Series 86, the one who gets the re-release is Starscream again. But in addition to that, it was difficult to obtain a lot of these molds anyway. You couldn't exactly go out and visit the shop that was supposed to have them. Instead, it was very much sit at home, wait for it to go live, order it as soon as you can. I can think of no end of times where my phone nearly crashed trying to order certain ones of these. So like, I remember trying to order Runabout was a nightmare. Trying to get hold of Thrust in the UK was ridiculous. The Coneheads were hard to get. I didn't really struggle with Thundercracker and Skywarp. They sort of became generally available later on. The Centurion set was originally quite difficult and then other places just started stocking it. Lifeline I bought separately because I wasn't interested in Ratchet. I had the Siege one, so I bought her separate, but she cost me over 70 to get imported from the US. Not worth it, but it's a character I don't own, so why not? Also worth noting is the fact that Hasbro would decide to release the corpse of Optimus Prime as its own toy. But overall, my issue with the exclusivity was just how much it was rife and just how hard it was to get. If you're a collector during this time, you'll know how stressful it could be. You know, you don't want to be stressed doing a hobby like this. You want to be chilled out. You want to be relaxed. You want to be enjoying it. But that's enough shitting on Arthrise. Yeah, it's an easy enough target for everything that was going on at that point in time in the world. I'm here to enjoy the hobby. I see the good with the bad. I like what I like, I leave what I don't. Yeah, this line has its problems, and yes, they can be attributed to what was going on in the world. The distribution was fucked. Where was it not? Quality control was fucked, but 
I can imagine it was very difficult to try and carry on with business as normal considering nothing was normal at that point and I'm just grateful that for what was released it was as good as it was. Yeah they took some shortcuts but ultimately I feel with this line I don't hate it. I don't necessarily love it but I don't hate it. I think what I felt that Siege was a great concept executed mixed. I would say this is a mixed concept executed poorly. My bigger issue with this was we had a strong setup in Siege and for the most part they just brought it back to what we've always known. But then this is the thing, taking the good with the bad, it means we got more of the characters from the original show finally given their definitive rendition. Yeah the Seeker mold isn't the best but it's nice to have all the Seekers lined up like that. I think while this line doesn't quite strive as great as Siege does, I also have to consider it wasn't given the opportunity to. Taking that into account, I'd probably call Earthrise just a step below Siege. It tries its best with what it's got. I feel it delivers on what it intended to do. I've, my greater issue just lies with what it was it was setting out to do as well as how it got there. But I'm not going to hold how it got there against it because that's not fair. But ultimately, I don't see myself moving on a lot of these. I enjoy a lot of what came out in this line. It doesn't fill me with as much passion and surprisingly enough I found this video slightly harder to make than the Siege one. Like I've not really spoken about some of the figures imperfections just purely because it's not really something I want to bring up. It's just personal pettiness like the wings on the back of Hoist or Sunstreakers, Two-Tone or just various nitpicky little things that just aren't relevant to discussing the line overall. But at the end of the day that's just the way I feel about it. I don't think it was as strong but I feel like it did the best it could. And I've got nothing but respect to it for that. But what do you guys think? Have I missed the mark on Earthrise? Am I being maybe perhaps a bit too harsh on it? Or am I giving it too much praise? Is Earthrise actually complete dog shit? And I'm giving it too much of a free pass. Feel free to let me know what you guys think down below. I really appreciated the turnout to the first video. It got a reception that I was not anticipating with that many views for a first video. And I'm glad you guys seem to enjoy it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one just as much. Um, I think going forward, we're definitely going to do Kingdom, but after that, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do next. If you guys want to keep up to date with the progress of the videos, I have my various social medias posted, both in the video description and in the page description. Feel free to check it out. Thank you very much for watching. It's greatly appreciated. Have a good day and a wonderful evening.